I want to flow right out of this into this idea of, well, can we do better than just getting it roughly? Okay, can we do something more precise? And that's where we introduce this idea of Pearson's correlation coefficient. So, uh, this is a double-sided piece of paper, and you're going to need both sides, and you'll need a ruler as well. We want to answer this question about, you know when we said something might have a strong correlation, or a moderate correlation, or a weak correlation, or no correlation, right? What we want to do is better than just these vague words. We want specificity, we want numbers that we can use to compare, and that number that we're interested in is called Pearson's correlation coefficient. Now, there are these three key questions that I want us all to know. Like, you can calculate Pearson's correlation coefficient, the calculator will do it for you, okay? But I'm actually not interested in you guys being able to calculate it. I mean, I tell a lie. I'm a little bit interested because you will need to calculate it a few times. But the calculation is not the important part. A machine will do that for you in the future, right? These things though, no machine can do for you. You need to understand what's it doing? What is the aim or purpose of this correlation coefficient? Um, how does it do that? And what does that even mean? These are the three questions I want to I want you to leave from here with some good answers. When you go home, and maybe you know whoever's at home is going to say, hey, what did you learn today? And you're going to answer Pearson's correlation coefficient, and they're going to be like, what? And your answer to their what will be this, okay? Like, you're not going to tell them how to calculate it, okay? So by the end of this, I don't know, it might take about 15 minutes, we'll see how we go. These are the things I want you to be able to answer successfully. Now, as you can see down below in the second half of this page, to answer these questions, those three, like the, the what and the why and all that kind of thing, we need two different objects. We need to technically define what that coefficient is, Pearson's correlation coefficient, and we need to technically define this vague idea we've been talking about, the line of best fit. We're gonna do both of those, okay? I'm just gonna warn you ahead of time. You can see I have the formula hidden on here. You're about to write it, okay? But I just want you to make a caution over here on the left, right? Notice I've said we need to understand the coefficients formula. We are not going to memorize this formula. And in fact, after like this week, you are probably not even going to use this formula. And you're thinking to me, Mr. Wee, why are we learning it then if we're never gonna use it and if we're not memorizing it? The answer is, you can't explain what the correlation coefficient is without knowing what it's doing, okay? So don't freak out when I show you this formula. Write it down, but it's not here to be panicked about like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to use this thing in the future. You're not. It's so that we can understand its inner workings. Are you ready? Here's the formula. Now you're like, oh, okay, now I understand why he gave us a long prologue, right? Because as soon as people see that, they're like, I'm just, I'm just gonna pack up and go home now, right? You never have to use this formula. Like we never expect you to say like, oh, here's some data, go ahead and do this, okay? But I can't explain to you what the correlation coefficient is without looking at all the pieces of this thing, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna step th slowly through it and you can see I've left all of this space around um, in that table so that we can talk about the different parts of the formula uh, and explain what each of them does. Make this nice and big for myself so I can see. All right, so um, you can signal to me that you've finished writing the formula when you put your pens down, um, because I know this, it's, it's a mouthful. Um, R is the, uh, it's the pronumeral of choice, I guess, when we talk about um, the correlation coefficient. I don't know why they didn't just use C for correlation, because they reuse letters all the time, but I mean, C is used for constant, I suppose. So it's R. Um, they didn't even use, even use P for Pearson, but who knows. Um, actually, I have a guess as to why it's R, but we'll get to that a bit later. I'm not sure. Maybe you can look it up and tell me. And then you get a mixture of uh, Greek and, um, and English letters. So let's see if we can step through this. Most of the pens are down, which is fine. You can pick them back up. I just wanted to get an indication of when you finish writing. Let's step through this one at a time. The first thing is this big Greek letter here that you can see appears three times. Can anyone tell me what is that Greek letter? It's a, oh, okay, you've gone straight to the meaning. The meaning is sum, but the reason why is it's the Greek letter sigma. It's a capital S, basically, and it's S for sum. What we're doing is we're adding up a bunch of values, okay? So this means sum because we are adding up values. Whatever this, whenever you see this sigma, it means whatever comes after that, you're gonna add up a whole series of things, okay? So this formula, 
is the addition of a lot of different things. What is it adding? Okay, let's look over here on the right hand side. You can see a bunch of uh, pieces of notation, they come up multiple times, right? With these bars over the top. Now you've encountered this before. When you see X bar, that means, it means the, the ah, now this is interesting. We're in statistics, right? The bar over the top actually can mean a bunch of different things depending on context. In statistics, it means the average. It means the mean, right? You've got one for X, you've got one for Y. Why do I have two different means? What kind of data is this again? It's bivariate data, two variables, two means. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and write that down. These are the means for your two different variables. In this case, we're just generically calling them X and Y. And you've got the means here, and then you have an X and a Y that has nothing to do with the mean, okay? What does this represent? Well, if I go back to, let's go back to Desmos here. These are the X's and these are the Y's. You have many of them. You might have eight, you might have 80, you might have eight million. Each of those data points has an X, it has a Y. So now you can see why there's a sum. There's different X's and Y's hiding underneath here. And we're just gonna have to work out, or a calculator is gonna have to work out, a particular X take away the mean, a particular Y take away the mean. There's one thing, and then do it again and again, and then add all of them up. That's what this, uh, that's what this sigma indicates, okay? All right, now tell me, you think about this, right? X, a particular X, take away the average for X. What is this telling us? Hmm. When you subtract, well, let's actually let's think about this, right? Um, I'm guessing the mean height for this class is somewhere around 170 centimeters. That's just my guess, okay? Just because I've like stood roughly next to you and some of you guys are, well, I'm 178, so I know some of you are taller than me, some of you are shorter than me. There's more people shorter than me here in this class. Not by a lot, but you know, outliers sometimes, okay? So if I call this 170, do you all know what your height is? Yeah, okay? So I want you to mentally calculate for yourself what your, your X, which is your height, take away X bar, the mean, for you is, right? Now, say for me, 170, I'm actually just gonna jot this down as an example, right? If I said 178, which is my height, take away 170, which I'm just putting out there as the mean height, okay? That gives me eight. What does that actually mean for me in relation to this class? I'm, number one, I'm above average for the height, which is just, <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's actually probably higher, but whatever. I'm just gonna put myself as above average. I'm above average, not just I am above average, it tells me how much I am above average. Does that make sense, right? And of course, if you are less than 170, if you say 164, you're gonna get a negative value. So that tells you you're below average and how much, right? So what this is, is the difference from the mean. This is what this signifies, right? How far am I from the mean and am I above or below? This is really important. Um, I'm saying difference from the mean, it really should be differences from means, but you get the idea, it's just for each different variable. Make sense? Okay, so we've got the numerator now. We are adding up a product, there's a multiplication here, that is the combination of the differences from the mean. In other words, the further you are away from the mean, the bigger this numerator is going to be. And you're gonna add up a bunch of these things. Are you following so far? Okay. Do you see how working out these values is gonna help us work out, well, you've got all of these data points and you're gonna work out these distances from the mean. If your correlation coefficient is low, that means things don't, they don't go close to where this is, right? Does that make sense? If your correlation coefficient is close to one, that means everything is skewing very close to the line, okay? You see how what we calculated on our numerator is gonna help me, does that make sense? Okay, now again, you don't need to know like the technical details, you just need to get a rough idea. 